Welcome to Healthy Aging with Gina, the show for those of us who have been younger for longer, since I don't like to use the word getting old. And uh, we're going to start with our exercises. I'm so excited. I've got a special guest today talking about the Camino. What is that? Well, you're going to find out. But first, you've got to exercise and just get your brain and your body moving for those essential 10 minutes. So let's roll it. Okay, our first exercise is going to be about just releasing tension in the joints. So I just want the hands flapping out to the side. We're going to bring them around in front of us. Just keep them moving. Now, we're going to take one down and one up. Just got to keep everything kind of jiggle, 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 jiggle. This is good. Take them both out to the side. Wave, 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 wave. And swing. All right, we're going to bring them up in front of our face. Take it side, 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 side. All right, let's get all these joints nice and loose. We just loosen them up. I want one hand up, one down, one face, one face, one up, one down, because this is about coordination as well. Kind of, kind of keeping this all together. All right, now what about shaking the hips? Keep this whole body loose, shake the shoulders. All right, shake a leg, shake a leg. You know, if we're not moving our joints, our joints get stiff, and this is why you've got to keep them all moving. Your hands, your wrists, your ankles. One hand, one foot, wave them. Not a very jiggly joint, the ankle, but you know, knee in and out, wrist in and out. Change sides, shake them both. Ankle, wrist, knee, what's that? That's the wrist, that's the knee, Gina. You see that's what I mean? Coordination, brain stimulation. Keep these legs moving, arms shaking. We take these arms down by our side and just bring these shoulders up and drop them. Up, drop, up, drop. Okay, so that's kind of worked on all the joints. Now we're gonna focus on the hands, so important. So I just want these arms stretching forward and we're gonna keep the hands out and we're just gonna drop these wrists down and up, down and up, down. So arms are straight. Now we're gonna stretch out these fingers and turn it into a fist. Stretch, fist, stretch, fist, stretch, fist. ADLS, ADLS, activities of daily living. It's one of the things that is so important as we age that we just keep these hands Loose, mobile. All right, we're just going to touch each finger with the thumb and just go through them one at a time. You can watch them. And if you turn the hand upside down, now just start with the pinky and just touch the thumb. Each one, you can feel a totally different set of muscles are being used in the hand. So these are just great, great exercises for the fingers and for the wrist. Shake them out. So just move that hand. If you're opening a jar, your favorite condiment. Confession time, it would be Nutella if it was me. And the other. Both hands together, think like little spiders. Talking spiders, what about spider fingers going up a wall? And down, up. Take them out, this is good. And if you're feeling your hands getting crampy just in two minutes of little hand exercises, it can happen. All right, the next one is going to be some very simple counting. This is about our responses. So we're just going to find the beat and just tap it with the foot to begin with. So it's a one, two, three. We're going to step out on the four. So it's one, two, three. Go out on the four. One, two, three. Out on four. We're going to step forward on the four. Two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Back to the side, two, three, and four. So it's about changing patterns. All good for our response, our reactions. Change sides, one, two, three. Step out first on the four. One, two, three. 
I'm going to step it forward on the four. Four. Two. I can't count. One, two, three, and four. One. So we're going to go out to the side. So your reactions is about having to follow me, what I'm doing. Going inside. Going forward. Okay, both hands together. We're going one, two, three. Two hands, one knee. One, two. Same knee. Opposite knee. One, two, three, four. We're gonna cross hands at the knees. Cross hands at shoulders. Two hands, one shoulder. Just different patterns. We're going to count it back from eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. We're going to go out on the one and on the four. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And the one, other leg. Eight, seven, six, five. Out on four, three, two, and one. Very good. One. Three cross at the shoulders to finish. Excellent. So that's our little exercise. It's all about our reactions and our responses. The next one is all about neural pathways and shapes. So we're going to do three shapes. We do a circle. Different body parts, different sides of the body. It's what sharpens the brain. Right, left brain. Very good for us to do this. So we've got a circle going on down here. This hand's going to do a triangle. So that's a circle, Gina. It's a triangle with the finger, maybe. It's a very round triangle, I think. Try the other side. The other side's often easier. Your dominant side can normally do the tri- I can do a triangle on this side, you see. Your dominant side will always be able to do a triangle easier. I don't know why, it's just one of those right-left brain things, than um, you can. So, I've got a circle on the floor, I've got a triangle in the air. Okay, what about a line? So other hand, I'm going to do a line up and down here. I'm going to put this hand on the shoulder and I'm going to do a circle. Right, okay, that's a line, that's a circle. What about now trying to be really clever and seeing we've got a circle, we've got a line. What about a triangle on the floor? <laughs> this has turned from being a circle. What was I saying about being able to do a triangle? You see, the brain is trying to give these three different instructions all at once, and its little synapses are going, help! What the f... I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing, and I don't know what we're doing. We're, we're not all in the right place, is what I can say. Okay, change, change. What was it? Hand, hand, hand. Yes, this is, this is, a, this is a circle. This is a triangle. <laughs> Try doing this all at once. It's almost impossible. We've got one little exercise after this that's going to be on moving our legs. I think I'm moving my legs. That's a line, Gina. That's a triangle on the floor. That's a circle. How are you doing? We're <laughs> I said, what triangle? Isn't it interesting when we try to do different things on different sides of the body, how the brain just goes, help! All right, come on, let's finish up. Last exercise before we have our interview. I'm so excited. And this is all about keeping our hips, knees, ankles nice and loose. So, just a little kick to start with. Ten minutes of exercise is just so good to get the brain and the body moving. Whatever your age, whatever your stage, whether you're going to be sitting at the office, we're going to step it out one leg at a time. Point with the hand. Should anyone be remotely interested, I have had total left hip replacement. So for those of you who are worried about how mobile you can be, very nice little job. And walk, up hills, dance, do my ageless grace. The more active you are, the better it is. You're going to hear all about being active for a rather a long distance when they get to our interview shortly. March these legs. I want one foot tapping forward and back. Arms moving as well. This one's supposed to get your heart rate going a little bit. Woo! And the other side. Yeah, that's good. And march them. You can take one heel out to the side. Other side. Point to the toe. 
nice. Keep it going. Almost there, then you can have a little rest, grab a glass of water, and sit back and enjoy a talk on the Camino. Last kicks. Here we are. 10 minutes of age discretion. Welcome back to Healthy Aging with Gina. Well, as I said, uh, it's all about being younger for longer. And I have a guest today who I think epitomizes that. So Kent, Kent Smith, I'm delighted to welcome you to the show and to talk about a subject that I think is passionate in your heart and uh, which is going to be the Camino. But I'd love just to kind of hear a little bit about you, your, your background, where you're from, um, so that my audience knows a little bit about Kent first. Thanks, Gina. Well, sometimes people say I talk too much about the Camino. Okay. But I'm originally from the States, but I've been in South Africa for 40 years okay. by choice. It's, the, for me, my place in the world. Mine too. But my other place in the world, of course, is the Camino, because it's been a time since I was 50 of going back on, on a pilgrimage of transformation. Wonderful. Slow sometimes, painful other times. All right, I just want to say, because people, when I've said and told people that I'm going to be doing a show on the Camino, it's been one of two reactions, which is, what is it? Or, I want to do that. And that tends to be people's reactions that people don't know, or if they do know, they want to do it. So I think the audience might better prepare themselves for um, a, a voyage of discovery, that this might be something that they also might want to end up doing. So I think you better tell us all uh, please, Kent, if you would, what is the Camino for someone who knows nothing about it? Well, maybe I should start with uh, the history that would be of great. it. Uh, currently, one of the stories of the history is it comes out of the Catholic Church uh, when Charlemagne resurrected what uh, many of us believe was an ancient um, pilgrimage um, pagan pilgrimage thousands of years old to this place called Santiago. And now, this is where? Which country? In northern is... Spain. Northern Spain. And, and Charlemagne from France, of course, who was very involved in, in, in Spain at that point because of the, the Moorish uh, invasion from the south, decided that he would save and resurrect the uh, Camino, this and the, pilgrimage. And the Camino stands for, it's often known as the way, is that correct? A lot of it's people... the way or the Camino de Santiago, the, the, the way of St. James. Uh, St. James being uh, one of the apostles who was martyred in the Middle East and put in a boat and, a, as, uh, according to the Catholic Church, <laughs> arrived on the coast and uh, his remains were entombed somewhere but only discovered a thousand years later by um, associates of the Catholic Church who took on this um, pilgrimage. So his, his remains are in the cathedral at Santiago, which is the city of which is St. James, is that right, in, in Spanish? Yes, yes. And that's where it, where it ends. But you were saying there are lots of different pathways and, and routes over this historical path to, to the capital. Yes, there, there are, and, and these are ancient pathways. Uh, some people will just say they were the way people walked uh, for the last two millennium. But uh, other people say, well, look, they all lead in a latticework either to Rome or to Lourdes or to Santiago. Uh, I've been from Seville in the south, a thousand kilometers up. So that would be a, almost, you could say, an African connection. And then I've met people along the way from uh, Ukraine, from northern uh, Holland, from Switzerland, every, every imaginable place who often leave their homes and within a short period of time, it could be an hour or, or, or a day, are on one of these main ancient paths to Santiago. So the, the, there is a very, there's one particularly most famous um, route, isn't there, a more popular route that starts in, in France, that's Saint-Jean, that 
So I think we better tell people just how long this journey is that, that um, you can you can and I know it can be done in, in bite sized pieces, but if you're doing the Camino proper, um, how long is that journey? Well, that one that you've just described, um, that many people start in Saint Jean, although uh, that is just on the other side of the Pyrenees in France, there are many other paths that cross over the Pyrenees. Uh, I myself didn't start at Saint Jean. I started one day in on the Spanish side. I, I didn't feel any need to do that uh, because to me it was a, the Spanish thing that I wanted to do first. And it, it then travels across uh, the north of Spain uh, on the inside of a mountain range. So you're not on the seaside, but on the inside, probably 200 kilometers uh, south of the Bay of Biscay, right. and you walk along each day 10, 20, 30, 50 kilometers according to your in inclination. Yes, I can see you. You were uh, surprised by 50. Well, the 50 surprises I've me. I've done that twice, uh, both times because I got lost, <laughs> and I was determined to get to where I wanted to go. Okay. I could have stopped earlier, right? but it was just one of those things getting lost for me wasn't going to deviate my goal for that day. Uh, I'm not always like that, uh, stubbornly so, but it just was it was also exciting. It was good for stories, you know, 52 kilometers in a day. That's quite uh, a, an So it was a blessing to get lost. <laughs> but the, So for most people who decide to do, they're going to do the Camino, who will start either just inside Spain, it's approximately a thousand kilometers at a speed that you that you want to do and it is a as you said originally a pilgrimage but for you you know you said you you, you did your first one at 50 how did you first hear about how well, you personally I heard through a friend uh, who was planning to go uh, it, I needed something in my life at that I had reached a certain point where I felt stuck but I was financially secure but Inwardly, it was now time to get that right as well. And uh, my friend said, well, how about this uh, Camino that's uh, very long? And I said, no, no, I, I, I wouldn't mind walking for a week uh, somewhere. In fact, I had just gone for a week uh, on someone's recommendation, and it was great. And it didn't take me long for her to convince me that I should do it, and she was going first in springtime, and I thought, well, I'll prepare myself and go the next year in spring. And as it transpired, someone that I had inspired through my first friend said, but Kent, why aren't you coming with me in October, uh, or September, October? And uh, when I thought about it, I realized, well, why am I delaying this idea of springtime and flowers that my friend brought back? Why was that necessary for something that is an inner transformation. It wasn't meant to be a walk in the park. And so I ended up going uh, in, well, 17 years ago for the first time. And how was that experience for you? As you said, if you were in a place of your life, I don't know if it's polite to call it a midlife crisis, but 50 years is an age where an awful lot of people have to make adjustments in their lives. And I suppose it feels like a halfway mark. Um, but as you said, that you could be in a place where you you felt secure, but there was something that you needed to to do. What did the what did the journey? What did the pilgrimage free up for you? Well, well, to maybe very quickly answer, there's a wide spectrum of things that stimulate people to go. Right. Uh, uh, often a, a death in very close to them, or like me, uh, trying to get a direction, trying to let go of certain things that were churning in myself that I didn't know how to get rid of. Uh, and I am a, a do-it-yourselfer to a degree, so I don't necessarily go to someone for counseling. And this seemed like the ideal thing because it's, it's a thing of letting go. Of, of, of going. When you even go, you, you have very little on your back. And uh, maybe, well, they recommend not more than 10% of your weight. So that's, say, six, seven kilos for me and wow. many people much, and it's good to do even less. So right. it's, a, it's an inner and outer shedding of the things that you normally do. Uh, 
getting angry at certain things, worry about certain things, that extra pair of fancy uh, uh, trousers that you don't need. You know, it's, it's, it's an inner outer shedding and getting rid of the unnecessary stuff. Um, and I think that's what sounded so excited that it was a, a, such a personal journey for, for an individual. Uh, although I think I, I'm slightly uh, daunted by the idea of carrying a backpack for a thousand kilometers, but many people have done it um, before us. Did your backpacks get smaller over the years? Did you, or were you disciplined right at the very beginning to literally sh shred it down to the, the essentials of what you needed to have in your backpack to travel with? Well, I, I was lucky because I had gone through this process, but not actually walking when I was even in university. There, there were books that I had read that talked about being a minimalist when you travel and hike in the mountains. Okay. That wasn't a problem for me. I weighed everything, so I was down pretty low. Uh, not as low as I'd like, but definitely the 10% or, or less. Now I'm down even more. Uh, and it makes a big difference. One kilo makes a big difference. And many people start the journey, uh, a woman who should only be carrying five and a half, six kilos will be carrying 10, 12 kilos. Right. And it has its repercussions at all different levels. Uh, it, it, they have too much for their inner. And then of course it impacts on everything from hips to, to uh, to knees, to ankles, to even causing blisters because your walking patterns are such. So it's, it's yeah, it's... So it's, traveling light is, is recommended. Oh, it, it's essential. But if you want to torture yourself, it's a reflection possibly of aspects of your life that you need to change. And, and right. often people will send things back right. or send things forward as they go along. You mentioned that shedding things. Sensible. You shed your own fears and anxieties and you shed your stuff. Well, Kent, I think there is so much for us to discover about this. There's so much more that I want to be um, asking you about the people that you meet, um, the, the experiences that you've had. Um, the types of accommodation that one can do, kind of what should be going in that infamous backpack that I think I need to have you back for a second week. So I just think I need to wrap up this week of Healthy Aging with Gina. Thank Kent Smith for coming and sharing his experience with the Camino. And I look forward to welcoming you back next week because we're going to find out a whole lot more. <laughs> <laughs>